imperialism the historical meaning what does uh, imperialism mean in modern society and what are the consequences or repercussions of imperialism well friends before i discuss these things uh, in this video i just want to uh, give you in a quick uh, way why and how this video actually came into being now this video is a result of a conversation i had with with another with another guy that i met in the night intervening saturday and sunday basically more like very early sunday morning i would say now india had just won the world cup the 2011 cricket world cup a few hours back and uh, the indians as expected were jubilant and well they celebrated the way the only way we indians know how to celebrate such momentous uh, occasions that is by dancing in the streets with 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 the dhol beats music and uh, of course i mean if it was india then in india people not not only dance to the music but they also distribute sweets among e each other but here in australia well just a dhol with chhene that was the two musical instruments available to them and that was good enough for for the guys to have a hearty dance Cons uh, considering how big the thing was because india won the world cup after 28 years but perhaps everybody did, didn't like the way we indians celebrated and uh, i i happened to meet one of the guys who actually didn't like such show off and uh, he had a few issues and he raised a few points with me during the conversation which i replied to the best of my abilities now in this video i'm going to share with you a few things that i tried to explain to him and they, these these things are not just uh, related to india but to all the developing nations and even underdeveloped nations like uh, these are the things which people don't understand why these differences are there no imperialism as we all know was a kind of a phenomenon where some handful of very strong militarily strong nations they invaded other countries and made them their colonies what imperialism meant was that whenever a powerful nation saw that there are resources in another country in another land which does not belong to to that uh, to them but it has got resources which can actually contribute to the development of their economy which can make them rich they invaded that country defeated the local rulers and set up their own administration and they stripped the, those countries of all the resources as much as they could so that their own countries progress they made heaps of heaps, heaps and heaps of money now there was the old form of imperialism where actual invasion of countries was involved now in modern day the situation hasn't changed much the imperialism is still going strong it's just that it has changed its form from the ugly form of olden days to an uglier form of today now the reason i call it uglier is in olden days at least people knew that we are under imperialistic rule nowadays ordinary people don't know what's happening now modern form of imperialism is that if you see opportunity in a country either you overrun that country for a particular uh, for any stupid reason and overthrow that local government over there and install a government which is your puppet or the other way is if you can't do that if the country is uh, militarily strong enough to resist such a such an act and you don't have any reason to attack that country you buy the politicians that run the government in those countries now what happened in iraq what happened in afghanistan what hap what's happening in libya uh, i'm sure there are local conditions involved i mean no one no one is denying i'm not denying that there are local factors involved why that thing is happening but at the background of it the basic reason is the imperialistic interests of few businessmen because they know they have got an opportunity over there and 
they have created a reason to attack those countries and they have attacked those countries in one under one pretext or the other the only uh, uh, reason uh, the only uh, resulting uh, the only thing that can result from such an act is that the government that will subsequently be installed after the invasion is complete that government will be pro western businessmen and uh, it's another form of imperialism and to extend this imperialism to countries like india and uh, other countries which are str stronger developing nations the trick is the politicians they are corrupt just bribe them just buy them who doesn't know about the swiss accounts in which uh, former indian politicians have stacked heaps and heaps of money which they'll never use in their lives which they have earned by selling the indian interests interests of the indian people and they still can't use that money and that swiss ba switzerland is using that money swiss banks are using that money to loan it to other people and make more money out of it while india is still struggling in the name of development that is the other way now this is the new form of imperialism where you where you don't actually attack a country or even if you attack a country you don't stay there you don't control it directly you leave a puppet government or you buy the local government over there this is the modern form of imperialism now what are the repercussions of this imperialism the first major repercussion and that's and this uh, reply that i'm giving you is was a reply to the question that the other guy raised that why do people from countries like india pakistan philippines korea china thailand why do these people have to come to our countries like uh, say england america canada and other european countries to work over work over in those countries and my reply was people go to a country people go to a place where there is money because it's it's an it's a natural instinct population can only survive where there is money to feed that population to provide housing and other facilities to that population people from the de developing or underdeveloped nations move to developed countries because developed countries are rich and the reason they are rich while their own countries are poor is thanks to the old world imperialism now when british left india in 1947 britain was in in, in even in, even after the war britain was still very powerful and before the war britain was the most powerful country in the world and i mean i mean post war america and russia became more powerful than britain but i mean britain is still one of the most powerful nations but the thing is as long as the Brit british ruled india and not just the british i'm not blaming the british or whole you know, saying that they were the only ones uh, who did anything wrong i mean every european country was doing the same thing be it france be it po po portuguese be it be it Itali italians be it germans everybody had colonies and uh, it was the same same story in all the colonies those countries they ripped the colonies of the resources they never did any development in the colonies the only development that was done in the colonies was just to make sure that they are drawing resources out of those countries more efficiently if the british developed rail, rail railways in india that was to connect the mines and other industrial units to the ports to the port cities and other major cities or the cities where the british population used to reside like in shimla and uh, dehradun etc so basically the development was not meant for the betterment of the indian public but for the interests of the empire but that's understandable they were the ones who were ruling at that time and they had every right to save their own interests but that develop that thing that situation is the mother of the current situation of immigration now while when it, when british left India was still a poor country and underdeveloped poor country while Britain was the one of the world superpowers at that time Britain was a developed nation while there was a difference of decades between uh, Britain and India and as i said people naturally migrate from a poor place to a richer place where there is more opportunity and the opportunity is always more where there is more money that's the reason why people started to migrate from india and uh, other uh, asian countries like philippines uh, korea thailand china etc to western countries 
and uh, lately to Australia as well. So the thing is, what imperialism does is, imperialism takes care of interests of only one particular part of the world, while the other part suffers because of that. And the resulting fact, uh, res uh, the result is, people who are left behind, people who uh, who are left poor, the countries who are left poor, people migrate from those countries to richer countries, which causes all the problems asso associated with immigration and all that stuff. Not the uh, legal side of the immigration things, so like immigration policies and cust uh, immigration checks and all that stuff, but the problem is the influx of immigration labor, because when when an immigration moves immigration Im when immigrant labor moves into a country the labor the the the, the what you say is uh, the uh, living standard of the local labor that falls because when immigrant labor comes the money that the local labor is making that drops because immigrant labor will do work for cheaper uh, cheaper money and they won't demand for so many things because they don't have anything they need everything when I came to Australia, I didn't have a house, I, I, I didn't have a job, I had nothing, I didn't have a car, nothing. I needed all those things. And I was ready to, uh, to, do, wo uh, to, to do work at a cost which was, half, which was half what a local Aussie guy was earning. And that's what happens w uh, when, Im Im when immigrants come. And then, of course, I mean, when people are not used to seeing people uh, of other racial origins, they are bound to be a societal problems as well. And the worst is when when a local person is suffering is is poor and is suffering while someone who's just moved moved in uh, moved say in a house opposite the street uh, just four months back he's making more money than him and he's living a better lifestyle it increases the jealousy factor that's that's what leads to a lot of racial trouble but it's I won't say the local population is bad and I won't say the immigration uh, immigrant population is bad. All I'm saying is that this is the direct result of imperialism. And the modern form of imperialism is invading a country to install your own puppet government just so that your business interests are protected or bribing the uh, uh, government of the other country. Now what that's going to do is the other countries are going to stay poor because they the there won't be any development which which will actually benefit the people over there while most of the money will again be drawn out of from those countries and will go back into the economies of developed countries so if us goes to india and uh, does market deals over there and us firms have got money to install world class uh, industries in india but the money though that in industries are uh, that industries will generate that money will go back to the us it won't it won't dissipate in the indian economy except for the wages that the people working there will be uh, getting but then they're they're putting in the labor rather than the indian population working in a, in an organization which will put money back into the indian economy indian people are working for organizations which are putting the profit into us economy so at the end of the day it's not india which is getting developed it's the us which is still progressing India is developing, but say just 5%, while US will progress 20%. I'm just giving the example of US and India, to just to give you an example. That, that's uh, how imperialism affects the local economies. And what will happen in that case, when the Indian economy will collapse, more people from India will leave India and migrate to other countries. That is the worst repercussions of imperialism.